This is the BrainChip Podcast. Hear from our thought leaders about neuromorphic computing, beneficial AI, and how BrainChip's Akita is pushing AI to the edge. This podcast is a place for investors, practitioners, and anyone interested in the future of AI. Hi, this is Steve Brightfield, Chief Marketing Officer for BrainChip. Uh, this is the first in our series of EdgeAA Partnership Podcast. It's a, a set of conversations with key partners at BrainChip to bring EdgeAA applications to life. Each partner brings a set of key expertise to the market that can transform uh, uh, industries with their expertise, converting data to neural models running on BrainChip's Akita platform. Many of these companies will feature their software and products and demos on Akita's Edge AI box. And this partnership is to highlight the capabilities and the functionality that they have. First in line for our podcast is Quantum Ventura. Quantum Ventura conducts R&D for federal government customers in the areas of machine learning, hyperspectral imaging, hypersonics, cybersecurity, computer vision, synthetic aperture radar, and metamaterials based on metaopics, just to name a few. Wow. Let's meet the team here at Quantum. Srini Vasan, he's the president, CEO, and founder. He's a serial software entrepreneur specializing in AI ML with deep learning, large language models, and other technologies such as computer vision, cybersecurity, and synthetic uh, aperture radar. He has significant expertise in databases, ERP, big data, general management, social media analytics, and digital marketing. Hassan has in-depth expertise in agile software development, AI, ML, and business development and management. He drives the technical and management aspects of our products. Also joining us today is Aaron Goldberg, Vice President. For the past 15 years, he has been a consultant working in the business development, strategic partnerships, and sales and marketing for startups. Currently based in Silicon Valley, he has been involved in multiple high-budget technology development initiatives with Quantum Ventura, uh, taking enterprise-scale customized software, as well as commodities procurement, refining, and brokerage. Thank you for joining us together uh, today here. Uh, Srini, would you like to provide an introductory comment? Yeah, hi, Steve. Uh, nice meeting you. It's, I'm very excited to discuss about the opportunity and uh, the exciting things that are happening in the marketplace. Aaron? Hi, Steve. A pleasure to be here and looking forward to uh, discussing how we're going to be able to work with uh, BrainShip and uh, bring our cybersecurity to market. Perfect. So glad to have you here. So the reason I, I brought you here is you've done some exciting developments with BrainShip and we just want to really bring them to light. And, you know, one of those areas that we collaborated over the last year and a half is in development of some cybersecurity technology on the BrainShip uh, uh, Akita neural net, uh, morphic platform here. So you, this is a very exciting field, cybersecurity. Um, I have a question. Maybe I'll start with you, Aaron. How did Quantum Ventura get involved in cybersecurity? Well, back in 2015, so that's almost a decade ago now, we were initially focused on SEL4 secure kernel technology and Linux Android kernel securities. Uh, but we were ahead of our time and the adoption was way too slow. As anyone in Silicon Valley will tell you, being ahead of the curve is just as bad as being behind the curve. So around 2020, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, around 2020, we received a multi-million dollar Department of Energy grant and changed our focus to AI-driven HPC petabyte scale network intrusion detection systems. We call it Cyber Neuro RT, RT standing for real time, or you can just call it CNRT for short. Thank you, and that's really fascinating. So maybe, Srini, I could ask you, can you describe this project that you worked with under the Department of Energy contract? Yeah, yeah, under the SBR phase two funding. SBR, that's what, for... small business, uh, you know, uh, independent research? Yeah. What is SBIR? Yeah, SBIR is small business innovation research funding. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, under, the, under the phase two funding, we developed a fully functional prototype to demonstrate an enterprise grade intrusion detection system that can work on large servers, neuromorphic servers, and hybrid cloud. And we, 
basically we completed our prototype in April 2024, and we have we continued refining the product. Now we are ready to launch the product commercially in the marketplace. Well, that's fantastic. Maybe Aaron, maybe you can talk about you know uh, how that development effort translated into something that you feel is a commercially viable solution for cybersecurity. Well, well uh, with our systems uh, deployment flexibility, we foresee all major government agencies, uh, institutions of higher learning, national laboratories, and essentially any large scale business enterprise utilizing CNRT as their one stop for all things secure network protection system. Uh, we've designed the systems in such a way that it can scale up or scale down depending on the user's needs. For example, with simple commands, our system can remotely control servers to begin collecting network data. This way, CNRT can work for a single server or thousands of servers distributed across a network. So this isn't a point solution that sits in one location, but it is basically a capability that you can extend across a customer's network. Is that correct? Absolutely. Oh, that's it fantastic. Is a full IoT. Yes, it's a full IoT network intrusion detection, as well as uh, HPC clusters. Uh, like I said, this is an all all in one shop. So you know, part of what you've done is work with uh, with BrainChip to put this onto our neuromorphic processors. And uh, I know there's a lot of choices out there in the marketplace to do this. Typically, uh, uh, GPUs have been deployed for this in data centers. Uh, maybe you can uh, explain why you selected a neuromorphic processor for the, this use and what advantage it brought to you. Oh, gladly. Uh, neuromorphic processors will be the ideal platform for systems that cannot afford to operate on large amounts of power. For example, UAV systems or IoT systems. So these would need smaller platforms that consume less power and the machine learning model sizes have to be smaller as well. So if the neuromorphic processors are embedded inside a fully functional Linux appliance, it will be the perfect standalone solution for these use cases. So using a system like this, we can perform a real-time threat detection at the edge level without having to send the data to the central server. For example, if there is an impending attack at the edge computer level, we can detect these attacks much earlier without having to wait for the central computer to intervene. This will save a lot of time and a considerable amount of money respective to the size of the user's organization, uh, whether it be a small up or enterprise scale. The timing is everything in cybersecurity. I'm sure you're aware. Uh, one minute delay could cause millions of dollars in losses if you don't shut it down in time, right? Well, with the AI models running at the edge, our network security monitoring can provide protection against cyber threats faster than ever before. Wow. Okay. So in addition, you, you basically said there was two issues there. One was is the, the, the size, weight, and power of the solution is shrunk using neuromorphics, but you're also saying this creates another advantage, which provides a, a more responsive solution. Is that correct? 100%. You have low swap and faster reaction time. Okay, that's fantastic. So how does this help you uh, for particular access points or network gateways that might not be uh, served well with the, the legacy solutions? Okay, so the underserved and vulnerable points uh, across the, the market would be IoT, uh, medical devices, that's big, uh, industrial systems, you know, such as robotics, automation, et cetera. So our product suits different markets differently, and it can be very customizable, uh, whether it be on-premise or cloud or a hybrid solution, uh, such as uh, non-data center or non-PC connected devices, respective to what pinch points they have for their protection, uh, for their security um, uh, needs. 
So that's fantastic. I'm excited to hear about that. So maybe Serena, you can comment on this. So how can that impact, you know, incorporation of cybersecurity into these new network product solutions? You know, until the neuromorphic processors and the appliances came along, such a solution was not feasible. Uh, as we all know, the GPUs consume a lot of power. Uh, when, when you have a neuromorphic appliance like the one from Akita, uh, they really they completely change the game. There is, there is going to be a paradigm shift because you are having a Unix Linux appliance running neuromorphic processing at full speed. You're running a full machine learning model and doing the cyber security threat detection. You know, it's it's going, it's a very powerful solution. So this means it doesn't just um, you know replace an existing implementation, but it actually changes the way that you can address market problems with it with this uh, smaller, lower power functionality. Then, right? Exactly, exactly. So you, what you're doing is you're distributing the 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 entire cybersecurity threat detection model. You are doing a considerable amount of work at the edge and you're distributing, it doesn't stop you from doing the centralized processing. So you're complementing the centralized processing with an edge computing. So you're basically ensuring that there is more level of computing and more opportunity to detect threats. So nothing will slip out. So, you know, one of the challenges I see in cybersecurity, the threat's always changing, though. So um, is your uh, solution adaptable to that? I mean, what happens when new threats come on board and, and, and how do you deliver a product to the customer that addresses that issue? We have a capability to do a remote update, so you don't have to go to the physical device. We could wirelessly, since it's a Linux device, it's a Linux appliance, we will be able to remotely update the model. We could be able to bring in additional models. We could be able to bring in some additional data. Everything is possible. You know, a lot of people want that assurance that they're protected. And, uh, you know, part of having something as updatable gives them that confidence. Maybe, Aaron, you could comment on how, how you uh, can measure customer satisfaction or or uh, ability to support uh, to give customers what they're looking for for cybersecurity protection. Uh, sure. Uh, well, one great uh, litmus test would be the uh, the MRR uh, for for the subscription base. Uh, as that increases, you can tell uh, you have uh, customer uh, satisfaction. But uh, a lot of uh, the telltale uh, uh, indicators would be. Uh, how many how, how many hours uh, our support team would have to spend uh, working with the um, on-site uh, network administrators uh, for for each user, or uh, how many uh, uh, support tickets come in, or, or the lack thereof, I should say, uh, support tickets come in. Uh, the robustness of our system as it stands right now, uh, we can or see after installation and training with the uh, network administrators, we could foresee uh, very little uh, uh, support tickets being sent in. And um, that being said, uh, only time will tell. However, uh, we, we don't foresee uh, uh, many uh, hind hindrances or, or obstacles to uh, the deployment of our system across their networks. So Aaron, tell me, where do you see the future of cybersecurity using neuromorphic computing going and, and how will it impact the industry? Well, to add to what Trini was saying before, uh, for a wide variety of markets, we see significant business opportunities for the neuromorphic processors that are embedded into a Linux appliance. If multiple neuromorphic processors can be combined, we can deploy larger and more innovative machine learning models to detect cyber threats. We can remotely update these machine learning models to keep them up to date. And at the same time, we can transfer the remote entries into a central server to do further processing. So edge computing driven by neuromorphic appliances will greatly reduce latency in detecting cyber threats 
increasing threat response efficacy and saving lots of time and money. Well, Aaron, you just rebranded my Edge AI box. I never thought to call it a neuromorphic Linux appliance, but it's really a great explanation. It's a Linux box that has multiple neuromorphic chips into it. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing your uh, models running and, and being deployed on that Edge AI box. So uh, maybe you could comment on, on uh, 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 Srini, on where your company is today and offering uh, products in this area. Yeah, our product CNRT right now is available in multiple configuration. You can use it on different uh, target markets. We have an enterprise version. We have a small business version. And we have a neuromorphic appliance version, which we will be working with you guys. Uh, each one of them will cater to a different market. If you can combine all of them together, you can have an IoT network. You can have an enterprise network. You can have uh, smaller smaller networks, the regional networks. You can put them all together. Our systems will scale to thousands of servers. You can run it on one server all the way to thousands of servers. So we are looking forward to a strategic customers to deploy our cutting edge solution. Right now we're discussing with a very major defense contractor uh, for a large scale installation. Well, that's exciting to hear. And with the all the work that you've been doing, I think is going to be a great interest to people in this marketplace. Um, you know, the the day of of trusting anything that comes over the network is over these days, and having some assurance that you've got AI watching is is a lot better feeling. And it really sends some purpose to AI in this world where people are afraid of what AI can do. But if it's protecting you, I think it's going to be something that everybody's pretty excited to get uh, in, in a product. And it's fantastic that you've been able to take all your uh, uh, expertise in, in this area from development in the Department of Energy contract and translate it to the commercial marketplace and make it available for enterprises and even small businesses. That's really exciting to hear from the team here at Quantum Ventura. Is there anything else that you'd like to, to comment about uh, in, in the, the market here or what Quantum Ventura uh, sees in the future in this area? You know, we are living in exciting times. We, we are, uh, the compute has improved tremendously. The, the footprint has reduced and, you know, we're getting more and more technologies that could be put in smaller devices. Uh, you know, as the, as the hackers are getting smarter, now we are getting, we are getting smarter too with the AI. Uh, we see a tremendous opportunity and uh, we are living in exciting times. Srini, thank you so much for your time today in this conversation. Aaron, I loved your insight on where we're going into the marketplace for this. Uh, we see this as, as an exciting application for neuromorphic computing and how our solutions in uh, neuromorphic uh, uh, computing are paired up with the expertise in your algorithms can really make a difference out there. And I'd really like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Steve. Uh, always thank a pleasure you. speaking with you. And it has been a great uh, pleasure to work with BrainShip over the last couple of years. Outstanding. Well, um, we'll hopefully do another series here when we can talk about some of the customer successes that you're having with this product. And uh, we'll look forward to promoting your, your solutions and demos and uh, continuing this uh, partnership. Thank you again so much. Thanks. Thanks All right, Steve. great. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the BrainChip Podcast. Please remember to rate and review on your favorite podcast platform.